Hi, welcome to our video about divisibility rules. Now when we say divisibility, we're talking about is a number divisible by another number? So someone might ask you, hey, is 45 divisible by 10? You'd be like, no way, because 40 is divisible by 10, but 45 falls in between a couple different multiples of 10. It falls between 40 and 50. So obviously if you took 45 divided by 10, you get 4.5 or something, that's a decimal, therefore it's not, not divisible by 10. So the question is, how do you figure out if a number is divisible by 10, or divisible by 9, or 8, or 7, or 5, or 3, or whatever, uh, happens to be the case for the problem you're looking at. Now I should mention, these are rules that you'll want to be using on bigger numbers, like things over 100. These numbers I got down here, pretty big numbers. You definitely wouldn't know them off the top of your head, except in you know, a few cases. But for smaller numbers, like 45, I should know right off the top of my head that that's 9 times 5. And I should know that it's not divisible by 10, right? Because that's not on the times tables. Most of the smaller numbers, anything less than 50 for sure, you should know off the top of your head because you've memorized your times tables. Now, if you haven't memorized your times tables yet, if you're still counting on your fingers, even if you're in pre-algebra, it's time to stop counting on your fingers. And I know that's a big deal, and I know it's, it's uh, kind of scary to have to memorize your times tables. Get an app for your phone, make flashcards, whatever you got to do, because if you're still counting on your fingers when Algebra 2 comes along, or even Geometry, you're just going to not be able to finish tests. You're going to start getting worse and worse grades. Not because you can't handle the material then, but just because you can't finish problems in time because you're counting on your fingers. So just everything takes way too long. That's like the number one problem I see in students struggling in later classes is they're still counting on their fingers, which basically means they're not able to concentrate on the material at hand. So keep that in mind. If you ever see a smaller number, we're just going to want to do it using our times tables. And I'll keep pointing out problems in this video where times tables are better call. So let's start with the first number first, two. Question is, how do you figure out if a number is divisible by two? If you're trying to factor a number, for example. Well, any even number is divisible by two. So awesome, that's really easy. Even and odd, really easy to spot. You just look at the last digit. So because five is an odd number, this is not divisible by two. Nine is odd, this is not divisible by two. This is even, so it is. This is odd, so it's not. This is a little tricky. If you know scientific notation already, this is two and then we gotta move the decimal place seven to the right. So two and then three, five, and then five zeros. And wherever you drop in your commas, point is this thing ends in zero. So even though it looked like it might be an odd number, because there was a five right there that it, it sort of looked like it ended in, in fact, this number ends in zero, so it's even, so it's divisible by two. And that's just, I don't know how often you'll see that, but if you're in a later class and looking back on this video for review, you might have the kind of a teacher who's going to throw scientific notation at you just to keep you current. All right, divisibility rules for three. How do you figure out if something's divisible by three? This is a really fun rule to use. And it's because kind of, I don't think anybody knows how it works, or at least I don't. It's um, just add up the digits. So in the case of 45, we just add four plus five is nine. And 9, of course, is divisible by 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Therefore, the whole number is divisible by 3. Again, I have no idea how this works. 1 plus 0 plus 9 is 10. 10 is not divisible by 3. Therefore, 109 is not either. You can see how great this is. 45, you might have known that 3 times 15 is 45. You definitely didn't know, you know whether this number is divisible by 9 or by 3. But we can just add them up. 5 plus 5 is 10. Plus 2 and 6 is 18. Ooh, got to know your times tables. Is 18 divisible by 3? Yeah, 3 times 6 is 18. But again, if you were sitting there hunting around trying to figure out if 18, you know, I've seen it very often 18 is one that I see kids count on their fingers all the time. And you're sort of like, man, that is wasted time. Add this all up. So you get 1, 2, use that up to 21. Is 21 divisible by 3? You bet it is. 3 times 7 is 21. And another tricky one. Now this is this one's actually great because we don't even have to draw out the zeros. No matter how many zeros this number has, and it has a couple, those don't add up to anything. So just five plus two plus two is nine. And nine is divisible by three, therefore this whole number is divisible by three. Don't have to worry about the scientific notation part of it. As long as it's an integer. Now if this was times ten, you know, to the negative two or something, and this was a decimal, of course decimals would not be divisible by three. But uh, in general, any big number, don't worry about the scientific notation. Divisibility by four. 
This seems like one of the trickiest ones because you have to do some thinking. There's sort of two rules to help you. One is that only the last two digits matter. And that's because 100 is divisible by 4, and therefore 200 is divisible by 4, and therefore 5,000 is divisible by 4. Only the last two digits matter. So these two digits obviously both matter, both matter. But on this big number, 5526, only the 26 matters. We can just totally forget about that. On this giant number, only the 53 matters. We can forget about everything else. And of course, this one, again, is going to end in 0, 0. So we can just forget about everything else. Once you've got it whittled down to the last two numbers only, now you have a choice. If you recognize it from the you know, times tables, go for it. You might know that 44 is 4 times 11. So excellent. That one is divisible by 4. 42, you're probably, you might be, even if you know your time tables, you might be like, huh, four times what? I, don't, I can't think of anything. Uh, there's two ways to do it. One is you realize that four times 10 is 40. And if 40 is a multiple of four, that means that the next multiple of four would be 44. And obviously 42 is not gonna fall in between there as a multiple. So this one is not divisible by four. The other way to do it is you can take the number, those last two digits, and divide it by two. So 42 divided by two, would give you 21. And what you do is, after you divide it by 2, you ask yourself, is it still even? 21, not even. 21 is an odd number. Therefore, another way of stating this rule would be that if you divide the number by 2, it should still be divisible by 2 again. You should be able to divide a number by 2 twice. So let's take those last two digits and divide them by 2, and then see if we can divide by 2 again. 53 obviously is an odd number, so if you divide that by 2, you're already in decimal territory, so this one's not going to work out. Although anything ending in 0, 0, interestingly, that is divisible by 4. If it had been just 0, 0 is obviously not divisible by 4, but since it's 5,000 or 50,000 or whatever this is, ending in 0, then yeah, that is going to be divisible by 4. All right, how to tell the numbers divisible by 5? This one's super easy. If it ends in a 5 or 0, it is divisible by 5. And if it's not, it's not. So 5, yes. 9, no. 5, yes. 3, no. 5, yes. And now this is a really tricky one. You'll notice on this one I changed the exponent a little bit. So 5.22 times 10 squared is actually just 522. So it's kind of tricky, even though you'd think scientific notation probably ends in a zero, because it was just the right amount of digits to move the decimal to right here and get 522, it turns out that last digit is actually a two, not a zero. So this one is not divisible by five. Kind of tricky. That's what I'm trying to do here is throw the tricks at you so that you won't get them wrong. So that, you know, if you see the trick first here, then you won't see it for the first time on a test. It's really the way, the way to go. How to tell if a number is divisible by a six? All right, this one's kind of fun. It's a combination of the three rule and the two rule. So basically, because six is an even number, the number you're looking at has to be even or six won't go into it. So right away, we cross out 45, cross out this one. This one ends in three, so we cross out that one. This one, remember, is 522, so that one's still under consideration. Now we just gotta do the divisibility by three rule. So what was that one? We just add up the digits, and if it's divisible by 3, everything's good. 1 plus 0 plus 8 is 9, and 9 is divisible by 3, so check mark. 1 plus 1 plus 6 is 8, 8 is not divisible by 3. And then, of course, 5, 2, 2 adds up to 9, and sure enough, that one is divisible by 6. All right, divisibility rules for 7. Now, there is no good rule that I've ever seen for bigger numbers to see if they're divisible by 7. There are rules you can find on the internet. Maybe your teacher will tell you one, but they're so complicated, I think they're just a waste of your time, and you won't remember them three months from now, much less three days from now. But, again, you've got to know your times tables. So anything less than you know, 60 or something, you should know. So the multiples of 7 are 7, 14, 3 times 7 is 21, 4 times 7 28, 5 times 7 35, 6 times 7 42, 7 times 7, oops, 49, and uh, 7 times 8 is 56, and of course 63 is 7 times 9. So you should know all of those, and that's the way you figure out some, something's divisible by 7. Most of the time you're, you're having to use these divisibility rules. It's going to be smaller numbers, and you're trying to factor them or something, so 
keep that in mind. All right, how to tell if a number is divisible by eight? This one's a little bit tricky, kind of annoying, but first of all, because eight is even, the number's gotta be even or eight won't go into it. So we right away can cross out 45 and, ah, this big boy. All right, so once we've done that, you're gonna use the same rule as divisibility by four, because for something to be divisible by eight, it's gotta also be divisible by four. But you can use the divisibility by four rule after you divide the number by two. So, well, for starters, 32 is just four times eight, so I know that works. 72 is eight times nine, so I know that is divisible by eight. 352, though, this is the one where I'm gonna have to use the rule, because who knows what eight times whatever is 352. But the rule says if we, div if we divide it by two, so we should divide 352 by two, and that's gonna give us 100 and, that's gonna give us 176. And now at that point, we're gonna use our divisibility by four rule. So for divisibility by four, we get to just ignore everything except the last two digits. And the question is, is 76 a presidential election year? So if you're in history class, you might know that. Um, if you're not, is 76 divisible by four? Well, if you divide it by two, it still needs to be even. 76 divided by two is 35 plus three is 38. So sure enough, 38 is even, therefore this whole number is divisible by eight. Tricky one, 522. Once again, half the number is gonna be something, but it's gonna end in one. So it's gonna be 261. And 261 is an odd number, obviously not divisible by four. So, no good. All right, so that's divisibility by eight. Not a very helpful rule, but again, you won't see it that often. Another way to, to know if something's divisible by eight is if it's divisible by both two and four, it's gotta be divisible by eight, is one way of looking at it. All right, so divisibility by nine. Pretty much, you wanna know your timetables for nine, so 45 and 72 are on there. So this is five times nine and eight times nine. Other than that, though, we can use the, the digit rule kinda like for three. You just add up the digits. Four plus five is nine, and nine's divisible by nine, obviously, so it works out. 72, seven plus two is nine. Nine is divisible by nine. One plus one plus four, hmm, six. Not divisible by nine, so no deal. Here's a big one, six plus three plus six plus three is 18. Ah, is 18 divisible by nine? Gotta know your times tables. Two times nine is 18, so yes, in fact, this one is divisible by nine. Pretty sweet. Now, as far as 10, most, most students know that if a number ends in zero, it's divisible by 10. So 272 you know, is not divisible by 10, 720 is. What's more interesting is how to multiply by 10. There's a real trick that it seems like most students pick up at some point, but if you haven't seen it, uh, it'll blow your mind. Um, you just add zeros. So if you wanna multiply 72 times 10, all you're gonna do is take 72 and then add the number of zeros that 10 has, which of course is only one, so let's add that on there. We get 720. Now this only works if this is 10. You know, if there's a one followed by zeros, not if there's a two or three or four followed by zeros. But all, you notice all the ones I gave you here, they have a one followed by zeros, a one followed by zeros. So that's when this works. And the reason this works is because we have a base 10 numbering system. I'll get into that in a different chapter just in case your school covers that. But uh, the point is that because we're in a base 10 numbering system um, all over the earth pretty much, then uh, that means that just adding zeros, we multiply by one and some zeros, we just get to add zeros. So that's 114, followed by one, two zeros, 11,400. Here we've got one, two, three, four, five zeros to add to 63. And of course, you wanna add your zeros before you add your commas. And I wanna point this one out, the scientific notation, which is pretty much what we've just been doing, I just wanna point out a common mistake for scientific notation, you're gonna take that number in front and then you're gonna move the decimal this number of times. So this should be 72,000. But here's the mistake I commonly see people make is they'll take 10 to the third and they'll say, oh yeah, that's a 10 followed by three zeros. So they'll write down the 10, then they'll put the three zeros on it. Now here's what's wrong with that. 10 to the third is just 10 times 10 times 10, right? Which is 1,000, not 10,000. So the key here is that that exponent is the total number of zeros. If you put a 10 and then three zeros, 
you know, you'll notice this number has four zeros instead of three. And that's because we wrote down a 10 with three zeros instead of a one with three zeros, which was the correct thing to do. So just put your one down, then that number of zeros, and you'll be okay. All right, so here's a sum up of our rules. Pretty straightforward. As I mentioned, things like, like eight, the probably the easiest way to figure that out is just see if the number is divisible by both four and two. So run your two rule on it, it's gotta be even. Run your four rule on it, just look at the last two digits and you'll be good. Um, same thing for six. One way of looking at it is if it's divisible by three and it's even. Another way of looking at that though is that it's uh, gotta be divisible by both three and two in order to be divisible by six. All right, so and by all means, I, mean, I hope I've convinced you the easiest way for these to, to do these divisibility problems is know your times tables like the back of your hand. You should be able to do them in any order. Don't use the table. Use an app or flashcards because you won't realize it, but if you use that chart with the big grid on it, you're, you'll be picking up some visual clues. You really want to mix up the order, do flashcards, do a flashcard app on your phone, something to really get them down hat. So when, when I ask you, hey, what's seven times eight? You're just like, 56. And you won't even realize you can answer the question until you already have. That's how fast you've got to be so you're not counting on your fingers and when you should be listening to what your teacher's trying to tell you.